Hey golfers and welcome back to another episode of Second Swing Thoughts and today two special guests from the University of Minnesota men's team. We have Brock Winter yes, and Bennett Swavely. Did I pronounce that right? That's right. I did. Yes, We're off to a great start. <laughs> so, uh, Brock and Bennett are here from the golfers. Um, their off season sort of just began. So we brought them in. We wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the D1 golf experience and sort of their insights on uh, maybe helping some other golfers out there um, achieve their goals, whether it's a junior player um, or maybe it's someone that is hacking it away on the weekends and wants to play a little bit better. But um, as we did with your teammates, we're going to start with some rapid fire questions. So, um, and you guys have the benefit of knowing what those questions are because you just watched the previous one be recorded. So um, we're going to start, uh, Bennett, with would you rather make an ace or an albatross? Uh, an albatross. I've already made an ace, so. Okay. I'm fine, I got one checked Rock? Uh, I'd say for me it depends. I mean, am I taking an ace from 130 yards over a 240-yard albatross? No. But am I taking a 240-yard ace over a 240-yard albatross every day of the week? Okay. That's a fair answer. I like yeah. that because not all – I feel like most albatrosses are relatively similar, right? You're yeah. hitting a longer club, usually longer distance. Some aces, though, can be pretty pretty short and cute. You know? I, got, I got something for you. Yeah. So my first ace is on a par three course, 77 yards. Do we count that or do we not? Oh, that's a great question. I think, what, uh, what is, what is it's Bennett? Par th- it's par three. And it's... I don't count it. No? No. So is that, do you have another ace? I do. Okay. I got made one this summer, yeah. Okay, so you have an ace. I do. That's good then, because now that question's not just like looming over exactly. your head. You know? uh, I don't know. I, I Maybe we'll have a comment on that if, if a, an ace on a par three course counts. Another yeah. one I have for you then. I played in a uh, scramble oh. this weekend. That was a so it wasn't the scramble part, but it was a big cup. Okay, that, that doesn't count, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's like a no, it's we like can't a larger than normal size hole. No, no. okay, say that counts. Okay, no, I I had to had to see, you know, <laughs> I know I, there's there's a lot of qualifiers out there. There's like you know if somebody hits the third shot on the scramble or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, does that count? I also think in a scramble, whosoever ball you take, they have to play first. Because if they keep playing last and then they like you take their shot every time, they say you made a natural birdie. Yeah. But you got to see everybody. But you got to see three shot. putts. And... So I think that should be a rule that. Yeah. I, like I think that. I would if I was. A if director. you're gonna, if you're going to be the group that calls out natural birdies, exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're setting the rules here yeah, today on this on the second yeah, thoughts podcast. Um. All right, uh, Brock, Dream Foursome, the other three players in mm. your group. Um, I have to play Tiger Woods. Yep. I just think the knowledge I gained from him would be awesome. Yeah, I'd probably throw the Pope in there <laughs> the to Pope. come along for some for, for some knowledge, <laughs> good um, wisdom. Yep. Yeah. And then good. I'd say the fourth fourth one's a hard one. Um, <laughs> just black the picture of like Tiger and the Pope just chopping it up. <laughs> Maybe like black tip H. Black tip H. <laughs> Big fishing guy. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> these groups, these groups of four players. This is good. Wow. This is good. Are you gonna top that? Ben no, or? mine's gonna be pretty simple. Okay. I'm gonna go with. Tiger was as well. Okay. So um, Tiger's in all four now. We've had... I think so. We've had four um, members of the team all say Tiger. Yeah. And then probably my dad. Yeah. And the fourth one, I mean... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe my brother. Okay. Just because... A little that's family that's affair. Fair. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's, Keep it simple. That is classic. And that's... Uh, yeah. It's very different. Very different answers. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I do appreciate that. <laughs> it gives me a really good visual in my mind of how a golf round would go between that group of four people. Um, so then I, I asked this one to your teammates, and um, it it might not be a good question. It might be a bad question, but I'm going to ask it again anyway. Um, I, to a pro that you guys emulate your game after a little bit. I'll start with you, Bennett. Um, so cliche, but I've always looked up to Tiger Woods, mm-hmm. just um, specifically kind of around 2000 when he was kind of yeah. winning everything. Um, his swing, every, every, every aspect of his game was just picture perfect mm-hmm. in my eyes. So um, trying to emulate some of my, uh, kind of what I do off of, off of that is something that yeah. I always, always do, so. I mean, Tiger's the safest answer out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. what, what doesn't he do well? Right, <laughs> right there. Is that yours as well, Oh, bro? no. If I'd have to emulate, like, old Dustin Johnson. Great driver, good iron play, but can't hit a wedge within 20 feet of the stick, <laughs> let alone, like, three putt from 10 feet. Yeah. Especially when the nerves are flying. 
That would be me. I like. Uh, but if I if I could if if I could, I'd go Max Homa. Okay. Solid driver, yeah. ball striking. Tempo Town. Just Tempo Town. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just yeah. so good. I didn't mean for this to be like a way for you guys to take a shot at yourselves in your game. Hey, you got to set some standards and humble yourself. Yeah, to get better. I, I suppose. But no, those are, I mean, that's, I mean, Dustin Johnson, uh, one of the best ball strikers oh, yeah. on the planet since he's been a pro golfer. So mm -hmm. um, definitely not a bad thing. But uh, all right, Brock, dinner you'd serve as a champion at Augusta. I'd start with a side Caesar. Love side Caesar yep. salad. <laughs> Um, I probably introduce a Masta Choli, especially like Cassetta's Masta Choli downtown, okay. St. Paul. Huge Masta Choli fan. Uh, maybe wrap it up with like a bazooki, like a huge <laughs> chocolate chocolate chip cookie with uh, ice cream on top. Just melts in your it. mouth. Just, just get me fired up for the week. <laughs> wow. Bennett, what do you got? Um, I'd probably start with a house salad. Um, okay. And then I would definitely... I definitely throw some walleye in there. Yeah, I'm a huge walleye fan. A um, little tartar sauce and some lemon. Love that. And then, I mean, I'm a huge. I just have like kind of the little bowls of M and M's kind of all around the side, <laughs> like you know. Really, no dessert, but I would just have some M and M little bowls. Yeah, during mix like the social some, hour. You can yeah, social hour. Mix a little and... peanut butter M and M's with some peanut M and M's and some chocolate okay, so... M and M's and. The difference between the peanut butter M&Ms and yeah. the peanut M&Ms. Mm. I am not, a, personally, preference I'm not that? a fan of the peanut ones. Okay. Big believer in the, the peanut butter, the, M &M. peanut butter the, the mini peanut butter ones. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm a big That's mini fan. That's an important fan. clarification. I, I had to, total opposite. So <laughs> if really? you had those at the table, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> well, <laughs> they'll be there. Yeah, so maybe, yeah. Maybe know. I'll have them <laughs> Yeah, so. it's his call. You know, he yeah. It's his decision. Okay. Um, but good. Well, well, thank you guys for doing that and, and joining um, kind of wanted to get because we got um, we had Ben and Jacob on and then we wanted to get your perspective on things as well as you know being a, a D1 golfer at the University of Minnesota um, we talked a little bit with them about sort of the day-to-day -day, what that looks like in the during in season and out of season and um, I guess from your perspective I wanted to ask about when you were in high school or when you were a junior player and you kind of envisioned yourself playing college golf what you're experiencing now does it match what you expected it would or is it is it different in a lot of ways go ahead yeah I think it's um similar in a lot of ways but also a little different um I think that you know the the early mornings for working out and the you know some late nights for hitting balls is something that I've always kind of you know I thought I would do and when I yeah. got to college golf um and is it is what I do here and there, but um, yeah, I think it's just as much golf as I thought I would play. It's a lot of, you know, it's every single day, maybe yeah. a day off here and there. But um, yeah, I think when I was a junior golfer, I think the biggest thing is I just wanted to see, you know, myself progressively get better year in and year mm -hmm. out. And I think that's something that I've I've been seeing. Um, and so yeah, I think that in a lot of ways, it's very similar to what I expected. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also, I also knew a lot of guys who were, when I was a junior golfer, who were college golfers at the time. Um, and so, you know, they kind of prepared me for it a little bit. And so I kind of knew exactly what I was getting into when, yeah. I, when I did get, did get here. So. Yeah, because you guys are probably in season. I mean, probably every single day you're either playing golf or you're mm -hmm. spending multiple hours on the practice area working on your game, right? It's sure. got to be, I every mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a real commitment that's a ton of your time during your day right yeah. yeah and that's uh especially during the you know trying to balance the school and stuff has that been a challenge in that respect i mean i because i remember i mean hey i i did the college golf thing a little bit obviously not at the d1 level but it's like five hours a day where you drive to the course you play 18 holes whatever and then trying to do the school work and stuff it, the time management becomes a big deal. Yeah, I mean, that's like the number one thing the college coaches and players talk about when you take a visit is time management. I've had many discussions, um, for example, like in high school, you, have, you go to class for six, six and a half hours a day, five days a week, and then you go to practice right after for three to four hours. In college, my first three years, I'd go to class for an hour and a half and be like, I need a nap before I go to practice. <laughs> right. And it's just, I mean, that's the time balance, being able to balance the homework with productively improving on your game. And then simulating that 
throughout the weekend on a tournament weekend where you got to sometimes do homework after a 36 whole day and you're out there for 10 11 hours so yeah the time balance is just is huge yeah. and if you get that down then things are just a lot easier three or four right. years yeah right and you guys have a similar um schedule like are you guys structuring your your class schedules around golf or how does that kind of flow or maybe you're structuring your when your practice time is around your class schedule how does that work for you guys i think um yeah just like a uh, start to finish day for us, I think a pretty stock day would look like if we were working out in the morning, we'd get up around 5, 50, 6 o'clock-ish and then work out at, from 6.30 to 7.30, um, shower, get some breakfast, and then uh, we have, at Minnesota, we have classes from, I think it's like 8 a.m. to about 1 p.m., so all of our okay. classes have to fit within that time slot. Uh, so we'll have you know classes from there. Some guys have classes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Some guys have classes two times a week. It all kind of depends on yeah. majors and stuff like that. But yeah, class from eight to eight to 12, one o'clock ish, and then we have practice or or playing uh, depending on the the season from one to or two to anywhere. But you know the one to seven ish I think is is usually where we're yeah. we're either practicing for that amount of time or we're playing or something like that, and then grab dinner right after, and then um, after that it's either. Mostly the time it's just schoolwork. Yeah. Um, get those. Right. Get that schoolwork in and then. Try to recover from the day and then you wake yeah. up and do it again. Yeah. 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 Very similar. Are you guys process. almost out at the golf course basically until it's like dark out at that right. point too? Yeah. We've, I mean, we've had many qualifying rounds where we cut it short a few holes because daylight prohibits the finishing for some groups. So right. it's unfortunate, but we, we manage what we get and we, we just go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I was curious about too, we were, we were talking right before kind of off air about just some of the courses in the area. Um, and you know we mentioned Les Bolstead, um, and you know I brought it up kind of ironically because nowadays it's viewed as such this short park style, you know. And you guys probably don't play anything like that in, in tournaments, right? I mean, very rarely, so especially that short. Of, so I guess I'm what I'm asking is the, the style of golf course you play is probably a lot different than you know what the average player might be watching listening is most likely play themselves on the weekends. Yeah, I'd say, so this fall, I think our shortest course we played was around 67, 6,800, and we played a course that was all the way up to tipping 76, 77. Yeah. So we're very fortunate. Obviously, uh, po or pre gopher invite that happens, uh, our first event of the fall, we practice and play out at Winsong just to kind of prep. We know the tee boxes we're playing, we get to mm -hmm. manage the uh, pin positions. Then after that, uh, we're very fortunate. There's, we've been out to, um, Minneapolis Golf Club. So if there is a course that we're going to that's a little bit shorter, a little bit wider dispersion off the tee, we can kind of simulate um, the courses that we're going to go yeah. and travel to so that we're, we feel prepared uh, for the situations that we'll have uh, for those tournaments. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it seems like, you know, especially over the last five, ten years, and we were talking about how Luke Donald won the Big Ten Championship at Les Bolstead, which yeah. I think is like 6,200 yeah. yards or something like that. He won it 25 years ago. And so distance has become such this huge, um, you know, it's become like the biggest piece of, of mm -hmm. you know, becoming a good golfer nowadays is how far can I hit the ball? Um, when you guys are working on your games and you're trying to get better, I mean, how much of it is hitting the ball further? I mean, are you guys doing, is there speed training in that? Is there finding ways to hit the ball further? Or are you guys at the point now where you hit it far enough? You're like, I just get me the rest of the game. Yeah. I mean, I'm basically built like a four by four compared to this kid who's built like a twig. So he, he can just <laughs> flex ball and hit it 360. Me, um, I have enough distance where I don't really need a speed train. For me, it's the putting side. I'm yeah. I'm not the best putter, and especially the speed side of putting. It's kind of been something I've really focused on this, this fall side. Credit to uh, Larry Bobka for mm -hmm. kind of showing me around the ropes and to, and to uh, improve on that aspect of things. But it's just wedges and putting for me now. Distance isn't uh, isn't the biggest problem. So. Yeah, it's. Is that how it is for you, Bennett? Or are you, yeah. You, you always I, looking to hit it further a little bit? Or no? Yeah, I think I'm always, I think, um, you know, that is one thing that, going back to like one of those first questions you asked is um, the difference between like col or college golf and junior golf. Yeah. Um, I think, ed you know, having a lot of length off the tee is a huge advantage, uh, especially if you can hit it straight and, yeah. and hit it far. So uh, that's something that I've definitely, you know, I, I realize that I have a pretty flexible body and I'm, tall and skinny mm -hmm. and so uh, trying to use that to my advantage um, is something that I've I've been working at the last two years um, and so yeah I mean I think that's just having having a lot of length off the tee is, is a big advantage and something that I'm always trying to work towards yeah I think you know again I'm 
you know, a little bit older than you guys, and I, I had my high school and college golf days, you know, years ago. But I, I kind of wish when I was in high school, there was somebody had told me a little bit like, hey, you should learn how to hit it further. You know, you should make distance more of a priority where, because um, to your point, it does seem like there's a large advantage to be had if you are hitting the ball mm -hmm. 20, 30 yards further than maybe some of the competitors that you're playing with in your group from another school. You know, suddenly you're hitting a pitching wedge into the green and they're hitting maybe six iron or seven iron. Yeah. I mean, that can make a big difference. And especially on some of these courses now where you said, I mean, 7,600 yards, that's a long ways. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I imagine you guys, to some degree, knowing that you have that advantage, if you do hit it far enough or farther than someone, you probably psychologically, you kind of, it helps you a little bit during the round. For sure. Yeah, we got a, we got like a, I think the last two or three years, our coaching staff and our team has kind of realized that adva like the advantage of being long off the tee. Mm -hmm. And so we've, we've actually started working with uh, Jeremiah Hills out of Empower, which oh, is yeah. like two minutes this yep. way. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just helped us tremendously with understanding our bodies and understanding how different muscles work, um, understanding how, like, where power kind of comes from in the golf swing, um, and then really using that knowledge to put it towards, you know, different workouts or, um, you know, different, like how, some, you know, there's ways where, like, Brock might gain speed different than how, a different way than how I would right. gain speed. And so understanding that and uh, just kind of accelerates the process of, you know, learning how to hit it farther and straighter and, more accurate everything so yeah it is it's just crazy i think distance is so much the name of the game now and if you have a course that's 7600 yards i mean you have to have mm -hmm. some distance to kind of keep up there so oh, yeah. um now one thing you know since we are sort of a golf equipment uh you know focused company here i kind of wanted to ask a little bit about the equipment side for you guys and, and what you guys play and stuff so um is there i guess going through your bag i'll, I'll i pose a different question to your teammates so i'll pose you guys something a little bit different here. Maybe is there a, a most popular brand that you guys have in your bag? Like maybe uh, you, know, you have the most, maybe it's Titleist or Ping or, you know, what brand is in your bag the most in your of your 14 clubs? Um, I recently transitioned from, I was big into Ping and Titleist. I had Titleist irons for mm -hmm. many, many years and then I transitioned to TaylorMade irons and I've seen just a huge, huge uh, gapping in just the dispersion side. Really? Brought it in. Uh, the wedges, uh, short irons have just been awesome. And then actually, I, have a, I probably have one club that not many people in the entire world have in their bag. It's actually pretty new. I have the Larry Bobka LB1 putter in the bag right now. Oh, That he, that he took yes. out of his trunk and threw in my bag, and I absolutely love it. It's a little bit heavier than like a Newport 2 yeah. uh, Scotty Cam, which gave me a little bit more feel around the face. And I've just been loving it. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's really cool. I, uh, I, I will say I've been very much contemplating the LB1 irons. Oh, yeah. Um, They're good. And actually, just it's funny, a couple weeks ago I played, and the eight iron head or the, the head of my eight iron flew off. So now it's oh, kind of like, well, I, it's almost to. fate. I have to, you just you know, have to. I got to make yeah. that great. But that's awesome. The LB1 putter. That's yep. good. Uh, so it's, it's for those who don't know, it's kind of like the the old answer yep. style, you know, blade kind of yep. a very classic look, but mm -hmm. simplistic. But, you know, if, if you're a purist, I think you enjoy that look and feel to it. So, for sure. Um, ben, how about your bag? Anything? Uh, well, notable brands. And yeah. So uh, no, I use club. a pretty mixed bag. Yeah. Um, I got Titleist, TaylorMade. Um, I have I have used Mizuno in the past. Uh, I have Mizuno irons, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I kind of got a mixed bag. No one brand that kind of sticks out. Um, sure. But one older club or unique club, I guess, that I have is I still have the Titleist H2 hybrid. Really? Um, yeah. That is I think old. they're maybe like 70 or 80 bucks nowadays. <laughs> but um, yeah, I still got that one in the bag, and I carry a two iron and a hybrid, just kind of depending on the course. And so, oh, is um, it kind of like a fifteenth club essential? Well, yeah, you know, like yeah. you pick and choose exactly. I, yeah, I, but, I have seen that before, and in, in some mm -hmm. you know guys on tour when we do our, you know, like winning what's in the bag. You know, mm -hmm. we see a lot of fifteen clubs, and then you get the comments where it's like, yeah, fifteen clubs. That's, <laughs> that's not allowed. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's actually that. Talk to me about making that decision every week because or I guess every event or whatever it might be. I mean, it, is it more weather conditions? Is it course or is it kind of both? Yeah, I think um, there's two things that I really look at is one is the the length of the rough and then two is how much wind we're going to have. Um, if there's a course where the, you know, the, the rough is pretty thick, um, I, I'll tend to use the um, the hybrid just so in case if I hit in the rough, yeah. I can, you know, it's a little bit easier to get out and 
um, longer par fours or, or par fives trying to get there in two. But if the course is pretty open and pretty firm, um, I'll just kind of chase, I'll put the two iron and just kind of chase it on yeah. um, the ground, get it rolling. Um, so yeah, those are the kind of two main things that I look at sure. when I'm deciding which one I want to put in the bag. Yeah. Have you guys so. noticed, um, maybe since your junior golf days or high school golf days, have, have you guys paid more attention to the to the equipment side and sort of the, the I guess, the fitting specs that you might have? Or is that something that you're kind of just like, here, Mr. Fitter, <laughs> give me what I need and I'll just go play type of thing? Yeah, I think it's kind of, as you age, obviously you get older, stronger, bigger, faster. So I wouldn't say that I know every club, every brand, every shaft model. Uh, I'd say one big transition I did uh, was like a change uh, wedge shafts. So I kind of rocked the okay. stock Vokey shafts were a little bit lighter, got a little bit too much spin, launched a little bit high, so I threw in like a heavier, heavier lower flex uh, wedge shaft, which kind of brought down the flight, and I can play around with mm. the launching with that a ton. So that's kind of that's been the only like big difference that has been a change in the past couple of years. So but other than that, it's nothing too significant. Right. Yeah. How about you, Bennett? What was the question? <laughs> I just kind of, I just kind of. No, it was just like if you, if in high school, in terms of like paying attention to your equipment, the specs that you might be playing, you know, is that something you're still paying attention to? Yeah, no. More now, or is it something that you're kind of just like you give your clubs to the fitter and you're just like, but give me what I need, I'll go play. Yeah, I'm about as I don't I don't look at really the details too much. I kind of let Larry just give me what I need. Um, But when I was in high school and I kind of had to do everything by myself, um, I would look at. You know, every single time something came out, I was like, I need that or, you know, I want to yeah. at least try it out. Whereas, you know, the more I've matured and the more I've I've gotten better at golf, I'm kind of like kind of going away from that a little yeah. bit. Um, it would really have to, you know, blow my doors off in order to for me to switch to something, um, especially like the lower in the bag, I guess, like the irons and the wedges, like it takes a lot for me yeah. to, to get something new. Um, drivers and woods, I can, I'll toy around with a little bit, but um yeah, I think that yeah. where I'm at now, I just kind of the less tinkering the better. Right. Um, just kind of harder said if, than as done. As long as it's you know, if it's not broke, don't fix yeah. it. Yeah. Kind of thing. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which if you're not swinging well, you kind of think it's the equipment, but usually it's not. It's usually yeah. just, you're swinging how you're, how you're swinging it. But <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's yeah. It's our second swing's old tagline. Uh, our old uh, slogan was, "It's not you with your clubs." Yeah. You know, which yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe isn't entirely true. Yeah. But <laughs> um, it is. It is. It is for. Uh, Probably the majority of golfers out there that don't really know exactly. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, it certainly can matter for a lot of players. And actually, oh, yeah. we would probably, in some cases, argue that a, a mid or high handicap player would benefit more from, oh, for sure, you know, a club fitting or, or getting something, you know, for their swing versus yeah, you guys, where you guys are dialing in, you know, everything about your games all the time, all year round. For sure. So. Yeah, I think the first time that I got fit at least, like I was just blown away by the difference and how much I didn't know about what I was playing. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, and once you get a grasp of kind of what you what you need in your bag, you kind of lean off of it a little bit. Right, right, right. Sure. yeah. Yeah, it's, I know I've, you know, I was kind of like you guys in the sense that, you know, before I worked here, you know, I was I was a, an above average player at the time. I was probably a two or three handicap, you know. I, I had played a little bit in college, but I didn't really know what I was doing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've learned so much, and you're right, like you go in there and the fitter, says a couple things you don't even know they what they mean yeah. but then all of a sudden you're spitting out way better numbers your shots are way better and so um it's uh it's kind of a weird experience first time you, you get a real fitting uh, For sure. it makes a big difference but um okay so let's let's kind of start to wrap up and i asked your teammates um uh, ben and jacob the, the same question i'll ask you guys as well um you know, looking back or maybe looking at younger golfers out there, junior players that are eyeing Division One golf, um, maybe want to play for the golfer someday, um, what type of advice would you give them to, you know, help them get to that level at someday? I'd say I'd probably focus a lot on driving and then 50 yards and in onto the putting green. Try to hit, the, try to hit your driver as hard as possible sometimes mm-hmm. on the range, try to get some speed, learn how your uh, body works. Uh, and then the wedges, I mean, that's where a lot of these players succeed. It's not from 150 to 200 yards. Let's just get it on the green and then two putt and get out of there. But when we're inside 100 yards, let's try to make them. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can make them, that's great. <laughs> um, and then putting is putting is crucial. Obviously, there's a ton of stats you can go play. Like if you're if you're missing your five footers, you're losing strokes. But if you're missing your 15 footers, you're not really losing strokes. But that's two putt. Lots of two putts. So my my goal is. I've gone 11 rounds without a three putt. So 
Are you, are you that, serious? That was, that's, that's my recent recent. That's uh, a real step. That's yes. a real. Okay. And uh, so I'm gonna try to beat that this this spring. So we'll see how that goes. I go maybe 11 holes without a three putt. Uh, yeah. 11 rounds without a three putt is actually one of the most wild things I've ever heard. That's nuts. Uh, good for you. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say to that. But that's that's good. So uh, yeah. So 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 your advice for the the younger players is to not three putt for 11 yes. holes oh. or 11 rounds. Yes. And then they'll be good. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Bennett, what do you got? I think it's just kind of staying consistent um, day in and day out with everything that you're doing. Um, I think, you know, staying on top of eating um, healthy, uh, working out, mm -hmm. um, doing drills consistently every day. Um, just the little things, I think, go a really long way in um, achieving, like, long-term goals. So uh, that's just the biggest thing I would say. I keep it pretty simple is just do the little things right. Um, and then just enjoy the process and don't get ahead of yourself. Um, cause yeah, I think that's yeah. what a lot of us did. Yeah. Just, we just fell in love with it and yeah. just played golf every day and did the same stuff every day. Yeah. And I suppose that's part yeah. of it is if you're going to play that much golf and practice that much, you better love it you better so, yeah. and better enjoy it. So that's for, for sure. sure. Um, Brock and Bennett, thank you guys for joining. Uh, that was very insightful, very good. And, um, I know I, hinted at this before if you haven't yet check out the youtube channel we're going to have some content on there from uh you know with the uh, gophers men's team so um but thank you guys for joining really good stuff and uh i guess for those listening and viewing we will catch you next time like comment subscribe and hit the notification bell oh i love that yes. <laughs>